Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number nine. Lesson number nine in the series of ten videos on the topic of exponents. And today is our meeting number 139. Problem for today is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. This says if 0 0.0018 times 10 raised to p, p as in Peter, divided by 0 0.03 times 10 raised to q, if this quantity happens to equal 6 times 10 raised to 9, then what is the value of p minus q? p minus q is what we're looking for. These are the answer choices right here. I'll give you 5 seconds at this point for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. As always, pause the video, do it yourself first. Once you have the answer, then you and I will do the problem together. Okay? Then you will compare your work against the work that we will do together in a few seconds time. I'll give you 5 seconds. Alright. As always, it's a good idea always to convert your decimals into whole numbers as quickly as possible. On the top, on the top we have point we have point zero zero one eight. Point zero zero one eight. If we want to convert this into a whole number, we need to move the decimal place one, two, three, four spots. We need to move the decimal four places. In other words, we need to multiply it by ten raised to four. Well we can't simply multiply we can't simply take the top we can simply take the top and multiply it by 10, uh, 10 raised to 4 to convert 0 0.0018 into 18 because now this quantity equals 18. But we can't just multiply the top by 10 raised to 4. If we're going to multiply the top quantity by 10 raised to 4 to undo it, to neutralize it, we have to multiply the bottom quantity by 10 raised to 4 as well. So now let's see what 10 raised to 4 times 0 0.03 is. Point zero three. Zero 0.03 times 10 raised to 4, well here, in order to convert 0 0.03 into a whole number, we just need to move the decimal place 1, 2 spots, 1, 2, that's it. In other words, in other words, 0 .03, 0 0.03 times 10 raised to 2 is 3. But we don't have 10 raised to 2, we have 10 raised to 4, which means we have another 10 raised to 2. In other words, it is 3 times 10 raised to 2, or if you like, it's going to be 300, but we're going to write that as 3 times 10 squared for a reason. Okay? We're going to write that as 3 times 10 squared because now we have, now we'll end up with 18 on the top, 3 on the bottom, and we divide top and bottom by 3, 18 divided by 3 is 6, which is what we see there. Let's see what happens. So that's it. So the top part, so that, that's it, 0 0.03 times 10 raised to 4 is going to be 3 times 10 squared. So this quantity ends up being 18 times 10 raised to p over 3 times 10 squared times 10 raised to q. I hope you are able to see this now. That's it. We need to simplify this thing. 18 divided by 3 is 6, so that's very straightforward. That is 6. And on this side we have 6 times 10 to the 9. 10 raised to p, 10 raised to p divided by 10 raised to q times 1 over 10 squared, this quantity right here, equals, equals, so now this 6 and this 6, if you divide both sides by 6, this 6 drops out, if you divide both sides by 6, both sides of the equation by 6, equals 10 raised to 9. We need to somehow get rid of this 10 squared from the bottom, multiply both sides by 10 squared. I am perhaps, perhaps showing you in too many steps, it's not, it's not actually that, that's roundabout, it's very simple, you just move this 10 squared to that other side. So 10 squared is going to go away, and there you go, 10 raised to p divided by 10 raised to q is same as 10 raised to p minus q, which we know now equals 10 raised to 9 plus 2, and therefore p minus q equals 11. Therefore p minus q must, 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 must equal 11. The question was, what's the value of p minus q? We just found it. You want to do one more? Let's do one more. Again, as soon as I set up, as soon as I finish setting it up on the blackboard, I want you to pause the video and do it yourself. So here's the here's the next problem. Do it yourself first. 
we are told that f point zero zero one three times ten raised to x times point zero zero seven divided by point zero zero point zero nine one times ten raised to y equals one thousand equals one thousand then the question is then the question is then how much is x minus y how much is x minus y and again the answer choices are same as before 7 8 9 10 11 again i'm going to give you five seconds for you to for you to be able to pause and unpause the video pause the video do it yourself and then once you have the answer then we'll compare your work against the work that you and i will do together in a few seconds time okay there we go five seconds all right let's get going there again the question we need to ask ourselves is how, do, how can we convert these decimals into whole numbers? On the top we have 0 0.0013. We need to move this decimal one, two, three, four spots. So in other words, 13, in other words, 0 0.0013 times 10 raised to 4 is going to be equal 13. Also, we need to take care of this guy, 0 0.0, actually that, yes, 0 0.007. 0 0.007 times 10 raised to 3 is going to be simply 7. So we need to multiply the top by 10 raised to 4 and 10 raised to 3 which is 10 raised to 7. Let's do it on the top. We can multiply the top by 10 raised to 7 and if we, if we multiply the top by 10 raised to 7 we have to do the same thing to the bottom. Voila. So now we have point, point 0 0.091 times 10 raised to 7 which we're going to write as because we need here 1, 2, 3 spots as 10 raised to 3 times 10 raised to 4. Point zero zero nine one times 10 raised to 3, which is point zero zero nine one times 1000, that's going to be 91. That's going to be 91 times 10 raised to 4. That's what we end up at the bottom. So let's do it then together. That's what we end up at the bottom. Where can I continue? I have no choice but to erase all of this thing. I should have written it a little bit lower. This thing 0.0013 is going to be 13, 10 raised to x times 7 over, this is going to be 91 times 91 times 10 raised to 4. I'm going to, I, I'm going to raise it, this gets too crowded. And all of this we are told, all of this we are told equals 1000. And 1000 can be written as 10 raised to 3. Are you with me in this story? First thing first, let's get rid of this 10 raised to 4 from the bottom. We're going to get rid of this 10 raised to 4 from the bottom by multiplying both sides by 10 raised to 4. Now this 10 raised to 4 goes away with that one. And here we end up with 10 raised to 4 times 10 raised to 3, which is 10 raised to 7. So we have 13. We have this 13 times 10 raised to x times 7 over 91 which has to equal this quantity right here 10 raised to 7. Are you with me? That's it, we're done. We're done. Oh, what happened to y? Blast it. We have 91 times 10 raised to y. I forgot that we have 10 raised to 4 and 10 raised to y. Of course we have to have 10 raised to y because the question was what is x minus y? What the hell was I thinking? So we have 91 times 10 raised to y. That's it, we're almost done. Let's, let's start dividing. I see a 7 on the top, you see 13 on the top, these are all prime numbers. 91, let's see if 91 is divisible by 7, shall we? Is 91 divisible by 7? But now we could do it here, but to make it easier for you to follow me, or to make it easier for you to follow me, I'm going to do it here. 91 divided by 7, this is how we divide it. How many sevens does 9 have? 9 has 1 7. 9 has 1 7. The remaining 2 from the 9 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. One more time. 
9 has 1 7, the remaining 2 goes, it joins the 1, becomes 21, and 21 has 3 7. In other words, in other words, 91 equals 13 times 7. 91 turns out it equals 13 times 7, which means 13 times 7 is 91. It all goes away. That's it, we are done. We have 10 raised to x on the top, we have 10 raised to y on the top, so it's 10 raised to x over 10 raised to y over 10 raised to y, which is simply 10 raised to x minus y, and that has to equal 10 raised to 7. Voila, x minus y equals equals. I am doing a very horrible job here. Oh no, no, that's fine. Because I, I thought I, I forgot 10 raised to 4. 10 raised to 4 went away. 10 raised to 4 went away because we multiplied both sides by 10 raised to 4. No need to freak out. This is it. There is no 10 raised to 4. It, we, we got rid of it. Because the reason I got paranoid is because I had forgotten 10 raised to y, if you recall. So I thought I forgot something else at the bottom. That's it. The answer is 10 raised to 7. The answer is 10 raised to 7 and therefore x minus y must equal 7. The answer is 7. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.